All right, Satan is a liar, and we are going to bring this coming forward in the name of Jesus, and coming into his love, his expression, his truth, and will set us all free. Freedom! Satan is a liar. We are going, moving into the abundance of the love of the Lord, moving into his everlasting truth. Good evening, everybody. We come to you again. Sorry, we had a technical glitch as Satan tries to keep the living word of God from going to the masses, to the four corners of the world, the four, to the whispers of God's wind, his love, his expression to you. Welcome to Anita and the Man. I'm Brian Hewitt, and at the 6 p.m. now, we're now going on 6.30 here in Los Angeles, Pacific Coast region here. We come to all corners of the world to bring the living word of God. We're going to continue at this hour of the night of your morning our message of prayer and and what can happen if we fall into if we are disobedient because God told Abraham to be strong in faith so it's a form of disobedience when we are weak in faith so we'll be dealing with that today let's pray dear brother dear God we thank you for your time your endless time that brings us to this road of grace that brings us to the straight and narrow many many are called but few are chosen we are kingdom bound we are gl given to the your glory we are redeemed by by your loving expression we thank you O lord in jesus name for this night your love your measure of your strength as we focus on our reality of your redemption with god in jesus name we love thee brethren we don't have to be rocket scientists to understand it is our strength of the love of Jesus Christ that brings us to a strong measure. Our foundation scripture is one that I've often said. We know a corporate prayer. We have that. Now we move into the quiet time. Quiet time, you and I, you and God by yourselves. I'm going to read you the foundation scripture for tonight's study. It's Mark 11, chapter 23 through 26. This is your personal prayer between you and God. This is your opportunity to express him and what is on your heart. Remember, God doesn't want to hear your prayers coming from your lips. He wants to hear it from your heart. An answered prayer always is answered prayer that starts in heaven. So Mark 11, 23, get a pen and paper to jot down these scriptures tonight, please. And let's, let's lift up the raise the praise here. Verse 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be removed, and thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Dear Jesus, we must lift all repentance, all prayer. Ask and believe what is in our hearts daily. Ask and give the opportunity to move away, to move away from the ways men. We have to know what our deeds are. We have to know what our devotions are what our discipline, disciplines are, what it is to be a, of the positive growth of God's love. There are many, too many cardboard Christians out there, plastic preachers, sado saints, playing the game of Christianity. But this is not a game. This is real love. The world has been turned off by these hypocrites. So, so is Christ. We have to move away from the hypocrisy of our own deeds. We have to move away and really fall, fall into the truthful love by lifting up all prayer, all supplication. Jesus warns us not to give our alms before men. That is, we are not to make a big show of helping others. Look for ways to minister without being a theatrical production. I witnessed the people on street corners after 20 years of ministry. My wife does the same in the supermarkets. We, go, we use these broadcasts over the internet to go to the churchless, to the gypsy nations of Pakistan, to the slums of Nairobi, which we were physically there. 
and we're going back in April to the slums in Lagos, Nigeria, Cape Town, South Africa, Tanzania, Madagascar, going to England twice this year. Canada, our work once in France, and our work continues here in Los Angeles, California. God wants change from you. God is demanding you that you cross over that river of change, but it starts at square one. By coming forward in the name of Jesus and being redeemed. We must give our own show amongst our own sh strength to grow. If we are going to put on a show, let it be for ourselves. Let it be for God. Let our strengths really fall into that living nature of God's loving truth. God's giving us His time, His endless rhyme coming upon us as we express His love to all depths of our soul, all depths of that new heart, giving that new strength of prayer. Lord, take me, love me, I'm yours. Lift me into the omnipotent power of yours, the strength. You have your arms outreached, open wide upon the cross. And as, as I am redeemed to come forward in the name of Jesus, you come off the cross and you put your arms around me, covered by the blood of Calvary. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let us move into this time. Let us move into this new you. Let us move into the abundance of all, all realities that God wants to place upon your heart. Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Again, that's Isaiah 41, verse 10. First Chronicles 16.11, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Exodus 15, verse 2, The Lord is my strength and my song. Yes! And he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is my strength, our strength, our song. Let it come into that time. Let it come into your endless rhyme of the truth that God has always wanted you to have. God has always wanted you to be. Move into that new song, the strength of prayer. Move into that ever so growing time that you've always needed with God. Lord, take me. Express for me the necessity of your truth and bring that truth into the strength of the knowledge of wisdom. Pour unto me the newness of the renewing of the mind and guide me to be around church folk, midweek Bible studies, Sunday service, the fellowship of the saints, small group Bible studies, reading two Proverbs a day as my daily spiritual prescription and get into the reading of God's time, of God's word. Jesus had nothing but words of compassion for the sinners, thieves, harlots, cheaters of his day. He was crucified for being a friend for, of sinners, but he reserved his most severe words for the hypocrites. He called them wolves in sheep's clothing and said they were like whitewashed graves, clean and shiny on the outside, but full of rotting flesh on the inside. If we are without the strength of prayer, if we do not want to go forward to be redeemed with Christ, then our own deeds of life, our own strength of life become our own hypocrisy. Jesus warns us again to be careful about turning our sinful life into being controlled by Satan's own theatrical production. Christ calls us to consider the motive of our giving. If we are still in the ways of, of man, the ways of sin, and we give just to make ourselves look good, the offering does not come back to you. Your obedience that you are acting up before people does not grow from that. We must give spontaneously, spontaneously in the name of Jesus at all times, an unplanned gift to someone in need. To that old woman that you see on the bus stop every day as you're driving by, driving by to work, 
Remember the the beggar at the at the gate. He saw Jesus walking by there several times, but his heart was so far removed. But when Peter walked by and asked for alms, Peter said, "Silver and gold I have none, but I have the love of Jesus Christ." This man could not walk. This man was homeless for decades and decades. But his faith, after he realized who Peter used to work for that was crucified and died, and now I'm hearing that he raised from the dead for, for, for me, this homeless man at the gate. I'm sorry that I never could speak to this man because my heart was so removed, but now I, my heart is with Christ. By my faith, this man was healed. By his faith, he was healed. We give an uncalculated way. Just let giving flow from your heart. We want you to be partners with us. We want to challenge you by traveling with us to Kenya, to Nairobi, to the slums there, to build medical clinics in, this, in these regions, to move into the new devotional of the new you to Nigeria, to go into Tanzania, Cape Town, South Africa, Madagascar, England twice, we're going to be France once, Canada, we're going to Upper Great, Lake, Upper Great Lakes region of the United States, and of course our work continues here in Los Angeles, California. And do join us at BrianTewitt.com. We want you to know us, and we want to know you. So send us, send us, send us a, an email of your questions of the Bible, anything you have about us, but we get forward in our message. The strength of our prayer brings us away from the thieves, the harlots, the cheaters of this day, not, not just in the days of Christ. Jesus went on to warn the people not to go praying on the streets in order to be noticed. Now there is nothing wrong with praying, praying in public, just as there is nothing wrong with giving in public. When Jesus, What Jesus is supposed to is praying that is only designed to get you noticed. To get you noticed. Remember, prayer, our prayer time is already answered in heaven. So you believe in your heart what you are asking for. Ask, seek, and knock. God gave you a goal. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Those verses are found in Matthew 7 7 and Matthew 6 13. Fasting, hypocrisy in our own disciplines. Fasting is the reholding of food or something that is of great pleasure to us in order to focus on, on ourselves spiritually, to get rid of the stronger dark shadows that come upon us. But no matter how strong these shadows are or how they are just like a weak, weak lieutenant or private in these armies of Satan, they just have thoughts, ideas, and suggestions those three tricks in the trick bag. The Bible says we are to fast, go without food or other pleasures for spiritual reasons. Fasting wasn't intended simply as a means of losing weight after the holiday, but as a means of spiritual growth, a spiritual necessity. Jesus expects us to fast, but the Pharisees would put on ashes and wear a gloomy expression and try to act religious to impress other people. We don't pray to inform God. Let me say that again, as I said a few nights ago. Jesus says that your Heavenly Father knows what you need before you ask. Prayer is done is one of the greatest acts of love and kindness God extends to us. Prayer quietly, privately, and with the motivation of talking with God. Why wouldn't you want to speak to the Creator of creation? He created you to become a habitation of His glory, to demonstrate all the measures of faith, to die daily for Christ, to wear the three rings of royalty, hope, faith, and love, and your jeweler that brings you these three rings of royalty is wisdom. Wisdom brings you, Jesus Christ brings you to a new door that you open up of your new life called faith moves you into your new house called salvation, brings you to a river called wisdom and baptizes you 
in the name of Jesus Christ and brings you upon that straight and narrow. And many are called, but few are chosen. Out of the trillions and trillions of people that have been alive on this earth, God chose you. Think of it. Think of it. God chose you. Whether your name is Billy, William, Sarah, Anita, the man, Brian Hewitt, Raymond, Quentin, Heavenly, Angel herself, Roberta, God chose you above everyone else. Everyone else. You may be living in a shelter tonight. You may be hearing this through just an audio contact over a phone or, or computer. God chose you to get off your mat and walk. Tonight you, or this morning, wherever you are, your needs may have needs, but when it comes upon this reality that you are focusing on called redemption, your needs are now met in the power of God, in the power of anger, of being hungry in the name of Christ. We move away from the sinister of hypocrisy.